Once upon a time, business was doing great for my wife, Joanne, and I. But soon, we fell on hard times. We were on the verge of losing it all. If it were just the two of us, maybe things would be different. But since we had a kid, we had to turn things around and turn it around fast. One night, while we were out having dinner and discussing how we would fix things, a man at the table next to us walked over and gave us a card. At first, it looked to be a normal business card, but then I noticed that it only featured a circle, triangle, and a square. And on the other side, there were a group of numbers. What is this? I asked. Um, I overheard you two discussing your money troubles. This card can fix that. Just call the number, he said. Then off he went. I placed the card in my wallet but paid it no mind because we both just figured it was some sort of scam. The next night, my brother Alan and his wife Kim came over to our house and told us about a card that they had gotten when they were down at the unemployment office looking for work. And when I asked them what the card looked like, Alan pulled out the exact same card that we were given at the restaurant. Who gave you this card? I asked. He told me it was a man fitting the same description as the man who gave us our card. He said that a couple of their friends got the same card as well. And they said that the person that gave them their card said that it was a chance to play a game that could earn them huge amounts of cash, enough to financially set us for the rest of our lives. I wonder if we should call the number, I said. It won't hurt to call, at least to see if it's real, said my wife, Joanne. So I made the call from my cell. The person on the other end said for us to be ready tomorrow night at 8 p.m. in front of our house and that a dark gray van would pick us up and take us to our destination for the games. So the next night, we all stood near the curb waiting for the van. As headlights approached us, we got in and was on our way, but not before getting knocked out from some sort of gas. As our eyes opened, we noticed we were in a huge room lying in beds. Then a man appeared in front of us, telling us to follow him. Before we knew it, we were in some sort of field, and in front of us was a large robotic looking girl with pigtails. We were then given instructions to play the game. The huge robotic girl began to speak. She said that the first game would be red light, green light, and that we were allowed to move forward when she shouts out green light, then stop when she shouted out red light. She said if our movements are detected afterward, we would be eliminated from the game. Those players who crossed the finish line without being eliminated within the five minute playtime would pass the round. Then she said, let the game begin. Green light, she said, as all players moved forward. Red light, she said, then all players stopped. What the hell? This is the easiest game ever. We definitely got this, I said to Joanne. Green light, she said, as all players began to move again. 
Red light, she said, as all players stopped, except for my brother's best friend, Johnny. Then, all of a sudden, a gun fired out of nowhere, shooting him in the head. Oh my God, is he really dead? Cried Joanne. Of course not, it's just part of the game, I said while giggling under my breath. But that blood, it looks so real, said my brother. Of course it does, it's a game. You know how like, like in the movies, the blood looks real but Obviously, it's it's fake, I said, but he still wasn't moving. Green light, she said. Then we all started moving forward again. Red light, she said. Another player moved a bit, then was shot in his head as he fell to the ground. The man's wife screamed, then she was shot in her chest, falling to the ground to her death. Oh my God, that is real blood. This game is real, I said. This was a horror that was about to get worse, much worse. To be continued.